Welcome back. Let's get back into the uh, statistics mode here. Um, we can't really complete regression analysis without something called interaction terms. And I'm going to try to explain to you what those are um, with uh, the good old pen and paper. So that being said, let me break it out. So interaction terms. We've, we've discussed a lot of things, and, and we talked about adding features to our models to make them uh, predict better. So let's start off with our basic uh, model without interaction terms. So we have some sort of y hat. Is the, this is the equation, and I'll walk you through it here in a second. b sub o plus uh, b1 x1 plus b2 x2. So again, this is our basic form of creating some sort of model that might predict uh, the next data point. Right, so this y hat means the y hat is it's an estimate. Hey, I'm estimating the the perfect value of y if I knew everything, if I was the almighty whatever, and I knew what y would be, then I wouldn't need a y hat. So this is just an estimate. So our b zero is just some coefficient that says, hey, we're going to start on this part of the y axis. Right, the b one is our first coefficient that is. It's a parameter you set or a weight you're setting for your x1 variable and then plus your b2 coefficient and your x2 variable. Now, what are the x's? Now, think about the x's as the feature values, whatever that feature might be. This could be the weight of the car. This could be the horsepower of the car, right? And now if you have horsepower and weight, so we can actually write it that way. Let's do this. Let's, our y hat is now our miles per gallon hat, right? Picture that as one variable equals some starting value, no matter what, it's gonna start at this value, uh, plus your beta one, which we don't know, and our x1 is now our, um, what did I say, weight. So our, we'll just call it w, and then uh, b2 times our horsepower, so for an h. So now we have like a real, sorry about the glare, but we have a real situation here, maybe I can move this just a tad. There we go, move it up. So. We want to estimate our miles per gallon because we don't know. If we put a new W and a new H in there we've never seen before, we don't know what the true miles per gallon is, right? All right, and that's important to know, especially when we start validating these uh, predictions that we have. Now, what the computer is going to do and what regression does, it's going to estimate these values, the B1, the B0, and the B2. How can you adjust all of those to get the best miles per gallon for all of the training? Uh, it's going to base it off the training data, so the data that you do have. It's going to say, how can I reduce the amount of errors? We've talked about this throughout some previous uh, tutorials. How do you reduce the error? And that's what we're doing here, right? But now we don't have to limit ourselves to this particular linear equation. We, we, we keep calling it linear models, and it is. It's, it's a linear model, but we don't have to use just weight and, and horsepower. We can use a combination of weight and horsepower. We can use anything we want. We could say, what if a better estimate for miles per gallon, so big hat, is equal to some starting condition plus our beta 1 times weight plus our beta 2 times horsepower plus, now we have a lot of other features, but we're gonna reuse these two features. We're gonna say, how about a beta three, weight and horsepower multiplied together, right? We created a variable out of thin air. It doesn't matter because what we're trying to do is predict miles per gallon. We're trying to predict that. There's no equation out there. We are inventing this equation on the fly. It does not exist right, so to speak. Now, granted, with the computer, you can actually get an exact equation if you wanted to, but that would be overfitting your data based on the training data, and we'll get into that as well. But I don't want you to overfit the data, so we're just going to estimate as best we can, um, and we'll get more into that when we talk about cross-validation and things like that. But I just wanted to show you this equation, add in, I know it's, I know it's a little glary, but you can see that bottom equation here, miles per gallon equals to uh, some starting coefficient value plus some weight times the weight plus some weight times the horsepower plus some other weight times weight and horsepower. In other words, weight and horsepower may have an interaction that they actually depend on each other a little bit, right? Um, I'm, excuse my terminology. I might be off with that word depends. So, But weight and horsepower together combined could have an effect. Let me erase this and show you one more, one more little thing. I'll give you the examples that they always give when you're trying to look this stuff up is people that are on a diet. So if you're on a diet, you have two different food diets, right? So we can say food one, food one, 
and I'm gonna put it into a table here, and food two, right? Now, this might be, well, this is diet food one, diet food two, they're both diets. We don't have a non-diet group. And now we have males, um, yeah, we have males, and we have females on this particular diet. And then we have, um, you know, did it work or did it not work, right? Or whatever the numbers are for that particular uh, table, right? For males, if you just use males, you'd end up with some coefficient. So let's not make this a binary here. So food one and male, you might have had some sort of um, beta value that's different than the beta two for females if you separated the equations out. And same thing for, um, it's probably not a good idea to use the, the beta for all four, but there, um, there are four different beta values. But when you add them together on the same set of data, you don't really see male and female separately, right? They're combined in the data. So if you ignore male and female, you would only have two betas, not four. So I think maybe that'll help explain it. There's not four betas, there's only two, but we can look at it as, well, what if there were four, right? We don't know. And that's what interaction is going to help us determine is, hey, is it, could it be possible that we can have a really predictable equation with just males and maybe not so good with females. So if we separate it out, maybe we can get some good male predictions, right? Um, but maybe together they are actually uh, better combined. We don't know, we don't know. There's a lot to learn about interaction and it actually gets pretty, a little bit more complex than that. You know, they talk about interacting graphs where you have like the male and the female and if they cross at some point, they would, they would have interaction, but if they never cross and they're parallel, then they don't have any interaction. But again, if you're doing some predictions, now this is pretty high level, this is pretty high level. Um, if they were kind of parallel lines for the male and the female, they're parallel, you know, if you're gonna predict something, it's always gonna try to predict sort of in the middle. And that's not good for male or female. So it's nice to know that if there's an interaction, if there is an interaction, that we can use it to help our model become better. More to come on that as we go, but I wanted to give you like the mathematics sort of behind it, at least the equation. Remember the y hat is equal to some starting coefficient value plus another coefficient for your first feature, which we called the weight, plus a coefficient for our second feature and third and fourth. In fact, you can get some very high order features. You can do weight times horsepower times quarter second mile. You can get very complex, but again, Remember, we don't want complex equations because they're very hard to use in real life, the computational power, and they may not be that, that accurate, right? You might add features and your accuracy doesn't go up much, but you added a lot of complexity, right? We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep the complexity to a minimum. Let me see if I can remember how to get rid of that. Boom, okay. So now let's just go ahead and do this real quick in R. and we'll go from there. So open up your R, get a script going, and let's just jump right in with the old favorite data set. I'm gonna say my data, my data is equal to the empty cars. All right, so let's load that up into memory, into our environment. You see my data over here, 32 observations of 11 variables. Okay, so remember how to create linear models? It's been a minute, so let's just do model one is equal to LM for linear model, and we're gonna say miles per gallon. We wanna know, miles per gallon is, is explained by, and we're gonna say, I think I used weight first, so weight plus uh, horsepower, right? And the data is equal to my data. So that we got that satisfied. Let's just run that model and do a quick um, summary stats on that. So model one, boom, you can see down below, that we have, um, and we're not gonna look at all these stats, we're just gonna look at the weight and the horsepower here, you have here and here, and you have the p-values that are actually significant, so uh, 0 0.001, and this one's very small, so they're both very small, so the both p-values are valid. So weight and horsepower are both significant in this equation. All right, but the other thing you wanna look at is the adjusted R-squared. Remember the difference between R-squared and adjusted R-squared is the adjusted R-squared takes into account multiple parameters. If you add features to your model, you actually could be um, hurting your model, and that's it takes care of that for you. So look at this R-squared value, the adjusted R-squared, 0.8148. Now remember that. 
Now, I said we can use a horsepower times weight and get a new model. So let's just create model two below that. So we'll do model two and we'll just compare them as a linear model. I wanna know miles per gallon explained by, I'm sorry that little thing pops up, by weight and horsepower, but there's a little shortcut to add weight, horsepower, and weight times horsepower. So we can do uh, weight actually times horsepower. That does not mean multiply. That means inside this function, it has a different a meaning. It means weight is a feature, horsepower is a feature, and weight times horsepower is going to be a feature. And I'll show you that in a second too. So let's run that. And we have our summary of model one. We could do summary of model two here. Command enter on that. Error. Oh, I forgot to add the data. So data equals my data as well. Boom, run that again. I'll run model one and model two. And let's take a quick look. So model two, we just ran second. And look at the adjusted R squared value, 0.87. So it's higher. You'd expect the higher R squared as you add, as you, as you add parameters. Parameters is the wrong term. Features. <laughs> I'm going to get that mixed up a few times. But if you add features, your R your multiple R squared will increase, but that's not a good indicator that your model's actually getting better. And more on that later as well. Look up here, you have your intercept, that's that B0, that B0 that I keep talking about, and you have your weight, and you have your HP, and you have your weight colon HP, and that colon actually means it's a variable called weight horsepower, so it's weight times horsepower. And so you have all of those p-values, which they all show that they could be significant, right? Because they're all below 0.05. Uh, finally, let's just get that equation of that model. We're not going to do this for all of them, but the coefficient of model 2, we can actually get those by doing COEF, C-O-E-F, model 2. And we have the intercept, the weight, the horsepower, and the uh, weight horsepower. Those coefficients, remember, so let me jump back to this and I'll let's plug those in and that's what we have so we have our miles per gallon estimate is equal to now our weight has got the coefficient of negative 8.21 so negative well actually we've got the intercept first which is 49.8 49.8 I don't know what the units are excuse me for not putting them on here I, I'm sure we can figure it out if we really wanted to but plus some beta one, which the beta one is, I'm pointing at the screen like you guys can see it, negative 8.21. So plus negative 8.21 times your weight, WT, plus, I'm gonna go on uh, multiple lines here, and I know it's messy, but hopefully with my audio you can get, get to the point here. The HP is negative 0.12 horsepower, plus you're gonna have a 0 0.0278 I'm sorry, the significant digits are off the chart here, uh, times WTHP, right? And that's a multiplication. So you can actually go back to your data set. Here's the actual equation. You could use, you can do the old school math way, plug in numbers for weight, horsepower, and get an approximate miles per gallon. Then you can actually check. Here, I, I think a little exercise for you, which would be kind of fun if you're nerdy like me, <laughs> or I'm trying to be. Anyways, if you go to my data, um, don't look at it ahead of time, but pick kind of a, a, a weight and a horsepower that's available. So don't pick one that's not on this chart. So we have a random weight, 3.150, and a horsepower of 95. Do the equation that we just um, gave you and see how close you come to the miles per gallon because you have the true answer. So looking at this, you have the weight and the horsepower, and then you have the true answer where the miles per gallon is. Pretend that you don't have the true answer. Check it and see how far off you are. Try a couple different ones. I think that's a great little assignment to prove that this equation may be something you're interested in to predict the future with it, right? So in the end, ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to chop this data set into at least two different parts, 80% training data, 20% pretend we never had data. So the test data or the validation set, right? That's the idea. That's what we're getting into. So you, you cut that data into pieces, then you can train all day long on that 80%. Now you can get 100% accuracy on that piece of on that chunk of data that you're using, but then you tr then you test out that data on the test set or the validation set, and you say, oh man, I was off. Well, that means you overfitted the model because we don't know the future. We don't know if the model truly is gonna follow that pattern. You know, it's not gonna go, we're not gonna be able to predict like that. 
We have to just get close. We don't want to overfit, and that's why you want to keep your variables or your models a little less complex than you think, right? Now, certain situations, you want more complexity, but in most cases that we're going to deal with anytime soon, we want to minimize the complexity of the models. Not everybody has a crazy GPU to run these models on. So again, hey guys, I appreciate you guys sharing this all the time and I appreciate you liking and I'm always appreciating everything you guys do and the comments are getting good. Oh, and somebody actually, I should have said, stay tuned for this uh, shortcut. Somebody commented today and I can show you, uh, maybe. Okay, we're back here. So uh, somebody commented on a previous video. I was trying to get the full path and I appreciate this comment because it was super helpful. All right, so let's say we're in the downloads folder and I said, hey, how do you get this path of one of these uh, tar.gz files? So I'm glad that you guys came back to witness this. I'm gonna hold the shift key and right click on it and down here you have copy as path. Click on that, then if I paste it back into my R or whatever and I did the untar, I would say my file name is equal to, with the full path, in quotes, control V, and there you have it, the entire path, much easier than the way I did it in the last video. However, you still have to change these to either forward slash or double backslashes. Don't forget that, because that will probably cause you some pain points. And I know that had nothing to do with this particular video, but the previous one, or the previous video that I did on another playlist, uh, this will be a helpful hint. So, have a good one.